questions, everything went on clear them over the weekend. Uh, okay, what do we have going on? Garage sale. That's about all it's up there. That's all I got. Okay, garage sale, folks. This is our big fundraiser. Uh, we, we really need for you to participate in this garage sale. Uh, so it's right, we're going to be having it right down the road. You folks who came in from Cortland, you passed right by St. Helens Catholic Church. They provide the uh, big church for their fundraiser. We need to raise about $1,800 at a garage sale to keep us in the battle against planned predators. Amen. So, Everybody get your stuff ready. Don't bring it here. Bring it out out there. Now, if there's some reason that Thursday, that Thursday, the 28th, if you have to bring it here, uh, you know, during the morning while we're at the men's prayer breakfast, because we go right from here, right down there and set up. But well, you have to go, for you folks from Cortland, you'd have to go right by there to get here anyhow. So mark your calendars. We need all the help we can get. Uh, we had some more babies saved this week. Amen. Praise the good Lord. And we had a really good chance to witness to, to a, a number of the heathens that, that came out to uh, Land Predators on Friday. And <laughs> boy, they were interesting. At a, at a very good visit at Death Row this week, but it was tough. The, uh, the temperature got to be 110 degrees inside where we were at. And all, all of us, there was only one person in there that enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. Well, when your circulation's compromised. Everybody's looking at Jim, and Jim just sat there smiling. It was something. It was, it was hot in there. We had a five and one half hour Bible study. And so, and it was, we had a tremendous Bible study this week, and we had a good chance do you know that every one of those death row inmates were registered Democrats? Oh, wow. Now all of them are. Uh, that's probably what got them on death row. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they want to allow everybody who's been out of jail, who's a uh, felon, to vote, to vote because they all were Democrats. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, a lot of them now have converted over because of the ministry. And so we praise the good Lord for that. Okay. Uh, what else is happening? Uh, well, we're thinking about another video day in August. Well, we're going to probably have another video fest. People keep asking when we're going to have the next one. we got a film called The Shade. Some of you saw it. Uh, it's, it's got some very interesting parts uh, in there. Uh, it's not a real exciting film, but it's very informative. And there's a couple others that we're going to probably be showing the film fest coming up probably about the middle of August. Okay, what else is going on? Pastor, uh, yeah. oh, I'm sad to tell you on the news, uh, Baton Rouge, uh, four officers shot, two confirmed dead. Oh, no. uh, it's contained oh, now, but just heard that coming in. Oh. Just happened today? This morning, Sunday oh. morning. Just uh, very close to police headquarters. It just, we're not sure about uh, who did it, but uh, it, it was uh, well, obviously a targeted... Uh, it's an amazing thing I sit there when I hear Obama talking about we've got to come together and we've got to have... Uh, here's a guy, a community organizer, whose job is to go in, cause disruption, <coughs> cause chaos, and then uh, bring in... And he's done exactly that. He's done exactly what we told you. But he first took office when he said that he was going to have the most uh, uniting... Uh, been a, the United regime, and it's been the most divisive. Exactly. Divisive. And we, we knew that that's exactly what he's going to do. But anyhow, a lot of things are, are happening out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll be talking about that. This morning's message, because today we're going to have some baptism. How many people are getting baptized in here? Do you want to? All right. Okay, where's Katie? Downstairs. Okay, Katie is free. Vince is supposed to be on his way. We've got another guy on his way. Okay. So, anyhow, it's going to be... You get your choice. You can be baptized in the river. Okay. We was in the river yesterday. There's that song that, uh, <laughs> that Elvis sings about grape crawfish. <laughs> well, it's 
Yeah. Crawl, I never have seen so many crawfish yeah. in that river as you did today. And uh, there's some big ones, aren't there? Well, they, uh, that'll be good, so you can not only get baptized, but take dinner home with you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. you don't eat you first. <laughs> yeah. Free fish, yeah. They got okay. some snappers on. Hey, Steve, did you... Did you do something to people? How come they're all sitting over here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the, the, it's a conspiracy. Most of you from Portland. That's conspiracy Steve right there. The, the famous conspiracy Steve. <laughs> Number one caller. <laughs> they don't want to be involved in a conspiracy over here. Uh, so, anyhow, then we're going to get right into the message. So, are we set in the message? Kuban. Yep. Ready to go. No John. alarms. <laughs> okay, Kevin. All right. Good morning. We're coming to you this morning from Doors of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio. Our zip code is 44065. And we'd love to hear and get a letter from you folks out there. You're listening to us this morning. On the Eagle 104.3 FM, the Eagle and Liberty Works Radio Network. The title of the message this morning is Baptism According to the Bible. Baptism According to the Bible. And of course, folks, everybody's <laughs> out there got their own way of doing baptism. But we're going to take a look at some things probably a lot of you didn't know this morning. It's been a long time. I haven't preached on this message in years. In fact, I can't really remember the last time I preached on it. But we're going to start this morning in Matthew chapter 3. And in Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. And as we go through here, you're going to find out that John the Baptist was the very first Christian. He was also the greatest man ever born of a woman. And uh, he was the first Christian preacher. And, and, we're going, and that's just the start. There's a lot of other things you're going to find out as we go through this message today. So we start now in verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent you, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord to make his path straight. And the same John had his remnant of camel's hair and leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then it went out to him to Jerusalem, and all of Judea, and all of the region around Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O oh, generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits and meats for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his flower, his floor. Gather his wheat unto the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized of him. But John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so for now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom 
I am well pleased. Now there's several places in Scripture where you find the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost present. This is one of them all at one time in the same place. And now Jesus, his baptism was unique because it was the only baptism that he had nothing to repent of. He had right. no sin to repent of. Exactly. And yet he repented of that sin because why? Well, because when he was to hang upon that cross, he would be made sin. The sins of the entire world would be upon him. Your sins, my sins, sins past, present, and future. And so, going back to John the Baptist, John the Baptist was the greatest man ever born of woman. Now people say, well, how could that be? How could that be? Because Jesus was born of a woman. Well, the Lord was referring to this because Jesus was pre-incarnate. Jesus existed from all eternity. So he was not just a man born of a woman. He was the God-man. In fact, the woman that bare him as he became flesh, he created. He was her creator. And right. she, she realized that. And so, in fact, she referred to him as her savior. And of course, there are those that teach that Mary and never sin. When only a sinner needs a savior, Mary would, would disagree with him, I think. Yes. Okay. And so, I want you to go over to Matthew chapter 11. And in Matthew chapter 11, it's an interesting thing, because listen carefully to what he says here. Uh, starting in verse 7 in Matthew 11. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went you out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaking with the wind? But went out ye out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft raiment are kings, are in kings' houses. But they went out ye for to see a prophet. I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger before thy face. What shall prepare the way before thee? Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he is the least, and the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days when John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent taken by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John, and if we will receive it, this is a light which is come for, which is for to come. He that hath ears, let him hear him to hear. Now look, John was greater than Noah. John was greater than Abraham. John was greater than Moses, than David, than Daniel. There was, John was greater even to this day. Hmm. So, I just wish that Muhammad Ali would have learned that before he died. <laughs> but I think he may have, because uh, he said he was the greatest. Well, no, the greatest was not a Muslim, he was a Baptist, right? Amen. Yeah. So you can always tell the folks out there, remember the greatest who was a Baptist. <laughs> and so, here... When he talked about that with John's preaching, remember it was with John's preaching that actually it started back there, the persecution of the world against the church. John, while yet still in his mother's womb, okay, uh, was a follower of the Lord Jesus. Go over to uh, John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, I want to read verses 35 through 42. Here you see that he had won over the disciples and had baptized them before directing them towards the Lord Jesus. We start in verse 35 and we read, Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed him. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, what seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? And he said unto them, Come and see. 
And they came and they saw where he was, and abode with them that day, for it was about the tenth hour. And one of the two which heard John speak and follow him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. <coughs> he first findeth his own brother Simon and saith to him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. And so that explains, you know, in Matthew where he's talking about here, <laughs> were those that believed that the church was built upon Peter. And if you read that carefully, it makes it very, very clear. The word Cephas means stone. Jesus said upon this Petra, upon the rock, the fact that he was Christ, that he was the Christ, his church would be built. And not upon Peter, as some people believe. Right. And so, if you turn over to Acts chapter 1, and here you're going to see this passage of Scripture here, very, very, very clearly and strongly implies that all the other 11 disciples have been together since the baptism of John, since they were baptized of John. And we start in verse 21. Where, wherefore, of these men, which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out, beginning from the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph and Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of the, these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, for which Judas be trans and fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Well, all of the apostles, all of the eleven apostles were present from the beginning since their baptism by John. So they were actually John's congregation. John the Baptist was actually um, the first Baptist preacher, if you will. Now, he was John, I want to make this clear, he was the Baptist, okay? He wasn't John a Baptist. In other words, folks, it didn't have the word Baptist upon top in front of the church. But just the same, um, John was the first Christian preacher. Amen. And I want you to go over to Acts chapter 19. In Acts chapter 19, This is going to be the only time that's mentioned in the New Testament of anybody being rebaptized. And we start in verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at court, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus to finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, unto them, unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him. This is on Jesus, on Christ Jesus. And they heard this, and they were baptized in the name of the Lord. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. So this was the only time mentioned in the New Testament of being rebaptized. Uh, see, that's what Baptists, actual Baptists, are really Anabaptists. A lot of, of us in our UBF, Unregistered Baptist Fellowship, refer to their churches as Anabaptist churches. Anabaptist seems means simply to re-baptize. Uh, because many, many people were sprinkled as infants, or they had infusion, and that's not baptism. Right. And we're going to go through here, you'll see, see why it's not. And so if we go over to Romans chapter 6, I want to read verses 1 through 14. 
Uh, here, uh, in this, you're going to see that baptism clearly implies immersion. No other mode uh, could picture the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. This is why what baptism means when you, you go in, into the water, a sinner. As you go down, your sins are washed away and brought up clean. That's the, the death, that's the death, burial, and the resurrection. And so, here, we read in verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid! How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, and like as Christ raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so even we should walk in newness of life. For if we have planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. This know that our old man is crucified with him, and the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he is dead, is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we will believe that we should also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died into sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed into sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness and to sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. So here again, in this, it implies uh, as you are going under. In fact, you know, in the old, in the early church, uh, many out there in the Anabaptists, actually, they would go down uh, to the to the lake or to the river, and they would actually be in the nude. They'd have their eyes closed. They'd go and they'd be baptized, and then there'd be people waiting with white robes as they come out. Okay, so as it says in Revelation chapter three. Those in their sins stand naked before the Lord. Understand? Mm -hmm. They have no excuse. And that's why he says to repent of your sin and be given a, a robe and earn a robe of righteousness. And then, if you go over to Ephesians chapter 4, now, here you're going to see. There's only one baptism uh, into the body of Christ. Uh, you don't have a you don't have a Baptist baptism or a Catholic baptism or a Presbyterian baptism. We have one faith that we continue uh, uh, that we contend for. And he says here in verse chapter four, verse four, there is one body. Okay. I just was, was talking to a, a fellow, witnessing to him, and uh, he's not saved, and, and, and he was telling me that, um, that he was baptized uh, as an infant. And I said, well, you weren't baptized, you were sprinkled. Hmm. And uh, he said, no, uh, because that's what the church teaches. I said, well, it's not what the Bible teaches. It's not what the Word of God teaches. Yeah. And so I was telling him about this. That you need to, one, you have to repent of your sins. And you need to say the sinner's prayer. You know? And he didn't think he had to do that. He thought it was taken care of when he was free for the baby. It don't work that way, folks. So there's one body, one spirit, even as you were called in one hope, of your calling. Uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, <laughs> one God, and a Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Now for
from time to time I have people calling me and asking me, well, do you think uh, Jehovah's Witness can go to heaven? Are there any Jehovah's Witnesses? No. Are there any Catholics? No. Are there any Methodists? No. You see, God is not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. you, you have to understand this, you see. Man, God is not going to conform to man's way. Okay? When he made the church, the church is made up of born-again believers. You don't have any denominations in heaven. Amen. Amen. And people have to learn that. You know, he makes it very clear. Christians, those that are they're, uh, all the same, whether they're uh, the Greek, the Jew, the Jew, the, you know, male, female, they're all one in Christ. So there are no denominations in heaven. When you get to heaven, you're not going to say, well, I'm a Catholic or I'm a, Pro a Protestant or I'm a whatever. You get to heaven, it's because you're a Christian. Amen? Amen. Amen. Period. Right. And so he tells you here there's one body, that's the body of Christ, those who are born again Bible-believing Christians, one spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, as you called in the hope of your calling, one Lord, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, there's one intercessor between God and man, one name under heaven by which we must be saved, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, right. one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now, the Bible says that Colossians, that Christ, that the Godhead is found bodily in Christ. In other words, He is the body. When you look at Him, you see the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in one body, and that's Him. Amen. And so, I want you to go over to Colossians chapter 2. And here now, we're going to take a look at how baptism identifies the believer with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And uh, Christ was charged with the violations of the whole law of God because he had the sins of the entire world on him. And let's start now in verse uh, 11. In whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now in the Old Testament with the Jews, circumcision was a sign what you did uh, to say that you were a believer now in the Lord. But now, baptism is different. Because circumcision only included men. Only men were under that. But baptism uh, includes everybody. Buried with him in baptism, wherein you are, you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you are being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have they quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. Look, in those days when somebody was crucified, all of the charges that were levied against them were written on it. They put a little plaque <coughs> upon that cross and, and to say what you were charged with. Well, the Lord Jesus, because he took on the entire sins of all the world, all of the laws were written upon there. He had literally, because he became sin for us. He became sin for us. So on, on, uh, what they have is that that plaque, and this is what he's referring to here, has the ordinance of the handwriting on us. In other words, our sins now, we were pardoned because of him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Blotted out. Our sins were blotted out. All the charges against us have been dropped. For the ordinance was against us and was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphed them over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you, <coughs> excuse me, in meat or drink, or in respect of a holy day, or the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the bodies of Christ. Well, the point that he's making when it comes to these things, 
it is not the day, but the event. And, you know, how often do we have, you know, we hear people, you know, you have those folks that get all uptight about uh, the birth of the Christ child. They call it Christmas, right? But folks, listen, it doesn't matter what day you celebrate it. There are people that say, well, I, I can't celebrate because it wasn't the 25th. It's not the day that matters, and this is what he's trying to get across to you. you know what happens when you start getting into that legalism, people start worshiping the day instead of the event, right? Right. And it's the same thing with Resurrection Sunday. It's not the day, but the event. And, and But you can carry that to the extreme. We had, we had people that left this church because we sing happy birthday to people. <laughs> and uh, they, they were very upset because they didn't think anybody should, uh, you know, should celebrate a birthday. Mm. Well, you know, Scripture says if it, if, if it doesn't speak against it, then we have the liberty to do it. Amen. Right? So we're at liberty. How many of you in here have had a birthday recently? Yeah. Okay. How many of you have had more than one birthday? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well. All right, there you go. Now, I can ask some of you how many you have, but I'll, I'll pass. You. But anyhow, so that's what he's talking about here, which are a shadow of things to come. That's the body of Christ. And then turn over to Hebrews chapter six. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go into perfection, not laying again the foundation from the dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on the hands and the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. Well, anyhow, he's referring to the principles there means the beginnings is what he's referring to. In other words, the previous chapter had just told you in verse 5 uh, here about the warning that he gives to the dullness. And maybe I should go back there uh, to that verse. Because it says in verse 11, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong drink. For every one that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now look. He's not talking about age and years or days. He's talking about your age and your maturity in the scriptures and your biblical literacy. In other words, he's making a point there. People think, well, I've gone to church Sunday morning. I've heard a preacher preach for an hour, so therefore God must be pleased with me. No. James 1.22 says, be you a doer of the word, not a hearer. Deceiving yourself, not a hearer only, not a hearer only, deceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to tell you this, that there are people that never seem to grow in their, in their biblical literacy. Mm -hmm. They kind of stay at the same level. I've had people for years ask me the same questions over and over. They don't grow. Now look, let me tell you something. You, you have nothing, nothing that will ever matter as much to you as your personal walk with the Lord and personal salvation. Amen. Now listen, God's Word, the Bible, makes it very, very clear. He wants to be first. He says this, that if you love mother or father or sister or brother more than me, you're not worthy of Him. Right. You understand? He says He wants you to put Him first. Now, there are people there that, again, like I say, they come to church for an hour, Sunday morning. The rest of the week, they never pick up a Bible. This is the greatest source of information in existence. Yes, sir. 
It is. You folks don't have answers. That's where the Bible tells you. Yes. The answers to all of your problems. See, God has no problems, but He's got all the answers. And you don't have any answers. You got all the problems, right? How many of you in here have had problems? Okay. See, God doesn't have any problems. But He's giving the answer to your problems right here in this book. Amen. And the question is, are you smart enough to read it? You see? I mean, that's the question. It's the greatest source of wisdom and knowledge in existence that's ever existed right here. And people, they pick it up for one hour on Sunday morning, then the rest of the week it sits somewhere else. That is foolishness, folks. And so he's talking about that. He said he's, when he talks about the principles, that means the beginnings of here when it says... Verse 1, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ. Apparently, the doctrines simply means the Word of God. The Word of God. And the perfection. Well, the perfection means maturity. And the foundation, repentance and the saving faith. That's what it means. That's the foundation. They're essential. Amen? Amen. And this, is where, this is where Donald Trump got himself in all that trouble. When they asked him, he said, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a Presbyterian. God doesn't recognize Presbyterians. God recognizes Christians. Right? Believers. And they asked him, well, then, if you repented of your sin, he said he'd never done anything so bad that he had to repent. What's the first thing you must do before you become a Christian? You must repent, repent. of your sin, right? Repent. Now, there have been a whole lot of people talking to and witnessing to Donald Trump, but he seems to be coming along. And there are people out there who, uh, some of the people I trust, like Jim Dobson and Michelle Bachman. I've had Michelle Bachman on my radio program. She is a, a real lady. I mean, yes. a real lady. Yes. And I had her on there when she first uh, came into Congress, when she was first elected. And she has adopted, I don't know how many children her and her husband have adopted homeless kids, and nobody wanted them. Praise the Lord. And uh, anyhow, they've both been witnessing to him. Excellent. Jan Porter uh, told me that uh, she had talked with him, and he had promised her he would not appoint anyone but pro-life judges. Amen. Okay, so I'm, I'm hoping that, that he's coming over, but I'm still taking the wait and see. I was offered to be a delegate, and I said, no, I'm going to wait to see. I see you know, I'm not sold on Donald Trump, and yet I have to wait to see. Mm -hmm. November is still a little ways off, huh? And so, I want to go over now, back to Acts chapter 2. John, could you show, keep me up where I'm at, because this is a quite a cut-up message. When you get a chance, let me know where the time, my time. Yeah, uh, 12 minutes. Okay, I just needed to know. <clears throat> you folks, the new folks that are here, it's different than us at Cortland Church. We're on radio, so they're, we're, this is broadcasting, so I have to keep it within a certain time limit. And so, in Acts, and I'm in the wrong Acts, Acts chapter 2 is where I want to go. Acts 2. There, we got it. Acts 2, 35 through 42. And here he tells you pretty clear the steps to take to get saved. First, you've got to believe on the Lord, repent of your sins, and be baptized. And so, as we read, starting in verse 35, until I make the foes thy footstep, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, What shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
for the promises unto you, to your children, and to all that are afar off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they, then they that gladly received the word were baptized the same day, and there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Well, that is the order. First of all, you must uh, repent of your sin, ask for forgiveness. Then you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, to be the Lord of your life, all of your life, without any reservations, completely and totally. Amen. And then you need to be baptized right away. That was one of the things. Now, you are not saved by baptized. You don't get saved by being baptized. Amen. You're baptized because you're saved. Amen. And so, if you go over to Acts chapter 8, <laughs> and here as we go to Acts chapter 8, starting with verse 26, <coughs> and we talked about uh, Philip, witness to the Ethiopian eunuch. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south into the way that goeth down from Jerusalem into Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, Behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for worship, was returning and sitting in the chariot and reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto him, Philip, go near and join thyself to his chariot. And Philip ran tethered to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man who should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Now the place of the scripture which he read was that he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a dumb lamb before his shears, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare this generation, for his life is taken from the earth? And after the eunuch answered Philip and, and, and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet to this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture, preaching unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, You see, here is water. What doth it hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down unto the, both of, both unto the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. And the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. And Philip was found at his estus, and passing through, preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Well, here again you see, in this case, uh, what was, first of all, the man had to do what? Repent? What did he have to do? He called upon the name of the Lord, and then what did he do? He received the Holy Spirit, and then he was baptized by immersion. And if we go over to Galatians chapter 3, Before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you have been baptized 
and to Christ have put on the new Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. And if you be in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Do you notice it doesn't mention transgender there? But anyhow, what is he talking about? He's talking about we have become immersed into the spiritual body of Christ. Uh, he is now our identity. In other words, what baptism is all about, folks, is you are making a profession to the world. You are professing to Christ that, uh, or to the world, that the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, <laughs> that you have put on, put on Christ, that he is, you become immersed in him. That's what you're professing here. That's what he just said here in this Amen. passage of Scripture. And so, in those days, now I want you to remember too, in those days when people were being baptized, uh, there were people watching, <laughs> and like there are now today, too. <laughs> uh, but, in fact, the persecution in the world today is actually worse than it's ever 